The Adirondack Mountains, full of mystery and inspiration for artists since the arrival of the first Europeans. And what they painted were sought out by art dealers and collectors from around the world. But with an entire continent to explore and paint, what was so compelling about the Adirondacks that kept the artists coming back for more? It is a question which I have pondered since I first came into the Adirondack wilderness to stay over 25 years ago. Well, then you can imagine my excitement when I heard that the Hyde collection right here in Glens Falls was putting together a exhibit of 50 of the best landscape paintings to be found anywhere. These landscape paintings are in the collection of the Adirondack Museum of Blue Mountain Lake. But today, they're right here, and we'll get to go in, take a look at them, and maybe even discover why, for over two centuries, artists have been flocking to the Adirondacks. That's a beautiful painting. It's gorgeous. You must be Laura Rice. I am. I'm Derek Mearden. How are you? Good. <laughs> nice How are you? you? Nice to see you. Now, you work for the Adirondack Museum. I do. But here you are at the Hyde Collection. Yes. And all these paintings belong to the museum. They do. How did they get here? Well, we have uh, somewhere between 40 and 50 here. And it was a joint decision between our museum and Aaron Coe, who was curator here at the Hyde. Um, we wanted to highlight images that really talk about nature and people's relationship to nature in the Adirondack region. And so what you're seeing are some of the very best of our paintings. So where do we begin? Well, I'd like to start right over there okay. with this one. All right. Why is this so significant? This is by Charles Cromwell Ingham, who was an artist who accompanied one of the first surveys of the Adirondack region done by New York State. It was slammed by critics. Um, they called it a lumpen landscape. It was not well received from the critical end, but it was a huge sensation because of the scale and type of landscape it depicted, unlike anything seen in Europe almost abstract, almost modern in, 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 in its shapes mm -hmm. that it uses. Exactly, very craggy, very large, a very primeval landscape. Right. And this was an important point for the 19th century because here it was believed you saw the earth as it was the day after creation. Right. So this was getting as close to God and the divine as you could possibly get. And you can get very close to God and the divine in the Adirondacks. Yes, you can. Add a couple of animals to it though, and now we're talking. Now, when I think of early Adirondack painters, this kind of scene comes to mind. Well, this is by uh, Arthur Fitzwilliam Tate, the quintessential Adirondack painter. And you'll see he has a very different take on the Adirondacks and nature than that first painting that we looked at. This is a sportsman's paradise. This is a much more comfortable environment, much less awe-inspiring, but a very rich environment for someone to come uh, spend time in the wilderness, the very masculine sort of uh, painting, um, but a very accessible yes. nature. Yeah, very accessible. Yes. This is what you think of when you think of Adirondack paintings. If you want to pinpoint one artist that had a major impact on the region, it would be Tate. His images were hugely popular. They really helped define people's expectations of what they would find and what they would do when they got to the Adirondacks. Yeah, and the Tourist Bureau loved him. Absolutely. <laughs> Should we head on and see what else we got? We certainly can. Now, Laura, this looks familiar. I'm a fly fisherman. I think I know where this is. <laughs> it's the Alsable River, correct? The west branch of the Alsable River. Exactly. The Wilmington Notch. Samuel Coleman is the artist, and what he was really trying to convey again is the monumentality of the landscape, this enormous place. And if you look very closely, the scale of the figures here, here's the fisherman standing down here mm -hmm. with his rod, very, very small. He's being dwarfed by this environment, which sort of closes in over the top of him as well. So humans are a welcome presence, but it's a reminder too that nature is much bigger than the rest of us. Show me another painting. Absolutely. Some of these paintings are new to me, some are quite familiar, mm -hmm. as I think they are to many other people. 
Like this one right here, this is a, a very p famous painting, huh? Probably Arthur Fitzwilliam Tate's most famous painting. This is called A Good Time Coming. A Good Time Coming is a quote from uh, Rob Roy, a popular novel during the 19th century that referred to paradise. There was a good time coming after this life. Tate painted this painting in 1862. Uh, just when the Civil War was really beginning to be a serious conflict. So what he's really saying to his audience um, during this time of great conflict and sorrow is that there's still a good time coming and you can find it right here in the Adirondacks. He's saying that the Adirondacks is a kind of paradise. Absolutely, a peaceful, beautiful paradise. Let's go over and look at this one over here. It really interests me. So this next painting that I'd like to show you, Derek, is by Homer Dodge Martin. And you'll notice something in this painting, an element that really takes starring role, and that is the light. Yeah. This was done a year before Adirondack Murray wrote his famous book, which brought thousands of tourists into the area for the first time. And this light that's just sort of hovering over the waters on the Saranac, and it's an expression, again, of this place as a home for the divine. Here's this divine light hovering over the waters, as it were, but much more peaceful, much more serene than that first painting we saw, mm -hmm. where it was much more awe-inspiring and, and even terrifying kind of landscape. Yeah, it's interesting about the light. I have a theory. The Adirondack Mountains, as you see them from space, look like the, the top of a Raisin Bran muffin. But if you look at uh, other mountain ranges from space, take the Green Mountains of Vermont, for example, and you see the mountains running north to south, north to south. Most mountains run in linear or horizontal lines. And when the sun rises and the east and sets in the west, you'll get a, a period at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day when the light is low, the sun is low, it's shooting through a lot of atmosphere, and you're making all those valleys between the high peaks glow, glow. It's called alpenglow. But in the Adirondacks, there isn't that linear structure, and you get the light bouncing all around the little nooks and crannies of the Adirondack all day long, and it makes magic light from moment to moment to moment. I think that had a lot to do with bringing artists to the Adirondacks for over 200 years and continues to bring them to this day. I had a wonderful time with Laura at the Hyde browsing this collection of Adirondack landscape paintings from the earliest canvases to the more recent ones. But all in celebration of the mysteries and inspiration of Adirondack light. But Laura had one more picture she wanted to show me, actually a photograph that is a cautionary tale on how fragile the wonders of the Adirondacks truly are. So this is a, an albumin photograph by Seneca Ray Stoddard, probably the most famous Adirondack photographer. Um, and he did a great deal with light and the reflection off the water, which you can see here, but he had a more important message, and that was that man's impact on the land um, could be a bad one, and that this was a place that needed to be preserved and cherished into the future. Wild Nature masterpieces from the Adirondack Museum will be right here at the Hyde Collection on Warren Street in Glens Falls through April 12th. For Mountain Lake Journal, I'm Derek Muirden.